All right, good morning, Solar Warrior Tribe, Power Hitters. Today is Tuesday, March 21st, 2023. My name is Jarrett McAllister, the virtual solar pro, alongside my main man, Jonathan Bernasso and Tom Cotter. Uh, today, we are going to be training on the virtual site survey and ODSS. This will be recorded on the YouTube channel. So if you're checking this out on YouTube, don't forget to hit the like button subscribe so you get notifications and share with your fellow solarpreneurs. Jonathan, Tom, my man, what's going on? How are you guys doing? Doing great, Jarrett. How about you, Excellent. John? Bernasso, nice sweater, bro. We're rocking some of the power swag here, live announced from Power Convention, virtual convention. If you haven't seen the website for the virtual convention, by the way, have, have you seen it, Jarrett? It's pretty awesome. It was pretty, it was pretty good. Liking some of those highlights too. Um, and for those on the platform, if you haven't checked it out yet, you can go into the back office and see the entire recap. The whole thing was recorded. Um, great footage, man. Yeah. Powerconvention.com. You can go check out all the different trainings, probably Jeremy Lee Miner's trainings in here. I'd imagine too, hopefully. So make sure to do that for sure. Yeah, the first, the, I mean, the very first session that Jonathan Bud did was pretty killer. Um, you know, not just the uh, personal performance part of that, but also just the, you know, the state of the solar union, so to speak. I, I always appreciate those. Yeah, he really gets into a lot of facts and data about the industry, the market, where we're headed more transparency than uh, any other companies and CEOs I'm familiar with. So yeah, go to powerconvention.com and take advantage of all of these amazing uh, trainings in here, different keynotes. Boom, Jeremy Lee Miner right there for y'all. Cool. Yeah, that was very cool. Very cool. Yeah. And I, one of the highlights when he talked about, yeah, that 20 year roadmap of where we are in this industry I mean, it's so cool to know like where we've come so far and we're just scratching the surface here with our company and with power on the platform. So with that being said, let's jump into success stories, gratitude. Um, if you have one, go ahead and raise your hand to chat. I already see some hands raised. Real quick, I'll just kick it off. I got a few I'd like to share. Um, first and foremost, I want to give a huge shout out to Tracy Canoni. Um, she has been a dear friend of mine for over 20 years. In fact, her one of my very first sales with power was her system on her home back in 2019. Um, she recently joined the platform the night before the convention, went to the convention, um, and then as of yesterday, just knocked out her third uh, mentor deal with me and just graduated to tier two seller on her home. So congratulations, Tracy. Super proud of you, girl. Um, yeah, right on. Tracy, do you have anything that you'd like to share, like to say? I see you on here. Um, no, just thank you for making me part of Power Family. I'm definitely excited to join. Um, I've been a designer and doing construction for the longest time now, so goes kind of hand in hand in California. So definitely looking forward to making this as another uh, opportunity. Right on. Thanks, Tracy. Thanks. Yeah, no, so awesome. And then shout out Aaron Knutson, mortgage broker, just hit tier two yesterday as well. And then I'd also like to welcome Michelle and Jim Pointer, um, the, a couple solar badasses out in Las Vegas, Nevada, who are already crushing, but wanted to expand their reach with the power platform. So welcome everybody. Um, with that said, I have Mr. Bonilla seems to have a success story every single week. What's up, brother? How are you? Good morning, Jared. Thanks for having me on. Uh, so I have quite a few, just because I could. I was in here last week, couldn't share. Uh, just Make it up for last week? Yeah. So I wanted to give a quick shout out to um, top mentors on my team, Stefan Pacheco, Isela Bunada, Ishmael Bermasco, and George Gonzalez. They've been having a lot of deals here in California uh, now that NetMetering 3.0 is coming. And then George Gonzalez just onboarded uh, Claudia and, and CISO. She's a Spanish speaking uh, new consultant and we just helped her close her second deal last night in less than two weeks of being part of the power platform. Um, 
And uh, also three weeks ago, we uh, we promoted a new tier. Shout out to Spencer Frazier's team. He's growing mentors left and right on his team. Uh, so three weeks ago, Vicky Sochi, who's on the call today, she got promoted to tier three mentor. Two weeks ago, it was John Sergna from Connecticut. And then just last week, all, uh, also from Connecticut, Kevin Savage uh, got promoted to tier three mentor. So Savage. that team with Spencer is there. They're growing pretty fast. So congrats to you guys. I know Vicky's on here. I don't know if Vicky would like to share a little bit about how she reached mentor real quick. Wow. Thank you oh. so much. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I'm absolutely thrilled to be here. Um, and just, uh, you know, doing doing all the basics that all you great leaders have told us to do. Don't be a secret agent, get the word out, be on social media, uh, make yourself available. And uh, that's pretty much what I've been doing. And in addition to that, um, with the mortgage and real estate industry in the state that they've been in, um, I've been helping many, I have about seven brokers uh, come onto the platform, just had another one reach out today. Um, I've been in, I was in the mortgage industry for 25 years prior. And when we had the crash back in 2007, mortgage folks and real estate folks had no lifeline. I mean, we were de definitely dead in the water. But now, today, everybody has a lifeline. And that's solar, it's such a perfect fit for mortgage professionals. So I've um, mm -hmm. been, been, been recruiting there, and that's been helping a lot. But Great so job, Vicky. Right Ricky. on, right Real on. Quick. And Real I, quick. man, if you, the one thing I'll take away from that, because I love this, do not be a secret agent. Do not sit on the sideline. Don't hide the fact that you're doing solar. You are missing out on deals. The key to your success is to let the world know. Um, I just want right, to say, on, we'll have to do this kind of want... quickly because we got four, five, uh, three. Yeah, we're gonna have to keep it to like left. three shares or something, yeah, guys. Just, but but real quick, Anthony shared some gold there, guys. He has mentors under him. If you want to make multiple six figures, like Anthony's gonna make next year passively, like you want to get mentors under you. That's the game. And one of the ways that he's doing that is through Vicky and mortgage and so much else. So big shout out to you guys. All right, let's go, Joseph. Sorry, Jared, I'm taking your job away. Good. Let's go, Joe. Make sure to unmute. Joe looks frozen. We'll he give it. Have, he may let him uh, reboot. Let's go, Chris. What do you got, brother? Yeah, what's up, everyone? Chris Bernasso here. Um, I wanted to give a massive shout out to the first recruit I ever recruited two years ago. He's the number one ODSS, VSS site survey. You guys all know him, Michael Pham. First person I ever recruited. He had a slow start to the business. Then he started getting involved in VSS, ODSS, and he's rocked that like crazy for the last year. And he has closed seven deals this month alone. So I wanted to give him massive props and ask him what's, what's going on. How is he doing that? Nice. He, he's going to share some training in a second, introduce himself in a minute, but yeah, Mike fam. Um, how'd you meet Mike, Chris? Was it, was it a friend of mine? Maybe I or? think you might've worked <laughs> at Verizon oh, okay. with him back in the day. Oh, okay, cool. Known you guys way too long now. <laughs> Is that the definition of hooking a brother up? <laughs> yeah. All right. We'll come to Mike here in a second on the training, but let's, uh, let's do one or two more shares here. All right, All John, right. what you got, bro? All right. Hey, Jarrett. Hey, uh, hey guys, how are you? I'm super excited. Last week when we were on this call, I had, had made my first uh, tier two deal. I now have two more tier two deals in the books. Um, really excited more for some of the teammates that are doing some stuff like uh, Nezzy Am Amsterdam. I'm not sure if she's on the call or not. I invited her, but uh, she she got a bunch of commercial referrals from people she was telling she's in solar. And I said, well, do they, any of them own homes? And she goes, oh, my God, it was like this epiphany. That's right. They own homes. So everybody, you know, she was excited that she could pivot that way. And then Greg Robinson is a uh, Florida roofing guy who kind of didn't understand the idea of marketing beyond just the roofing component and got super excited when I had a chat with him. And so he's on fire too. So great job, guys. I'm really excited for you. And the only other thing I wanted to uh, share is kind of a fun quick story is when I went out to this last deal I went to, um, I went to obviously submit it for a proposal and then it came back as a dirt lot. 
because the house is so brand new, there was no aerial footage. So I uh, hooked up with one of the site survey guys I met with on one of my other jobs and said, hey, you have a drone. Would you mind coming out here? I'll pay you something. And the guy came out, did uh, aerial photography for me. I submitted it with the with the proposal. And that's how I ended up closing the deal. And the homeowner even said he had three other bids, all of which were slightly lower than mine. He goes, but you were so much more comprehensive. And he goes, what were they using to create their bids with? He goes, you're he goes, you, you know, you're the man. So I I thought that was kind of a cool thing, you know, because I'd asked a tier three mentor what I do. I'm not going to name the name, but the guy said, build a ground mount and then you can fix it later. And I went, ah, I don't know. That doesn't sound right. So um, anyway, it's just kind of a cool little weird, you know, pivot story where if things don't, you know, show up on the, on the satellite view, there's, there's ways around that. So I'm excited. I'm up, I'm like a deal or two away from tier three and I love y'all. Right on, John. Thanks for sharing that, man. Great stuff, dude. You got serious momentum going. You'll be tier tier three, maybe even by next week. Who knows? So with that said, we're going to go Trentimus. We're going to go Nick, and then we're going to move on to the training. Trentimus, brother. How you doing? Good. Jay, thanks man. for putting this together. So good to see you guys be here. Oh, all right. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Briggs. Oh my god. No, I I switch. Okay. Hey, so yeah, I just wanted to share a big win this week. So there was a big 22 kilowatt deal uh, from a gentleman over in Carmel by the sea. Took he's a good friend of mine. He's a big builder, uh, does multi-million dollar homes. He said, Hey, let's get this uh, let's get this in, and then we'll we'll start having you do quite a few of the homes that we do. But they he, so we put it through, we finally signed the contract and then power sent an email saying there isn't an installer in the area. And we're right at crunch time for NEM uh, 2.0. So had to pivot, get a hold of some people in corporate. Uh, Steve came through, made it happen. <laughs> now we signed on his other home and uh, we have quite a few more set up. So I uh, got some team rolling as well. It just feels good. Starting to figure this out and I really appreciate you guys. Thanks, Eric. Love it. Love it. Don't take no for an answer, right? Overcome adversity. Find a way to make it happen. These are the wins I love to hear about, man. Love it, Trentimus. Great job, brother. All right, Nick, we're going to move on to you, and then we're going to wrap this up and move on. Right on. What you got, Nick? So I hit a trifecta this week. Uh, I have a, a B&I group that I belong to now for a little over a year and a half, and it yeah. continues to produce – the realtor in my group actually is on a distribution email within the entire organization. Whenever someone in that group says, hey, who does solar? He refers them to me. So I got a referral from my BNI partner to another realtor within Intero who I closed on Sunday, who's referred me to four others. We've closed five deals through that connection. And one of the women that sits in Intero office in San Mateo is now a mentee. So I hope she gets all those moving forward and I'll just uh, help her out and mentor her. So trifecta. Wow. From BNI, Nick, that yeah. is amazing guys. You hear that five, six deals in a month or two, an ambassador all from one connection in one BNI. Freaking love that. Nice job. Right on. All right. Well, thank you everybody for sharing your win success stories. I know there's a hundred more out there, but due to time constraints, we are going to move on. Yes, uh, sir. What you got here, Jonathan? Uh, I just got two, three minutes of updates and then we'll get today's training. Thank you for the patience here. We got month to date numbers. Now I get that this is a few business days behind, but let's look at referrals or recruits. Chris Bernasso, I'm going to say some names I recognize. Chris Bernasso in second, third place for recruiting. Anthony DePero in New Jersey, one of the leaders in the company there. Um, a few other names here as well. And then moving on to personal sales, uh, Miguel Hart, Jordan Shaw, kicking butt, Justin, got myself coming in the top five, Paul Leon here, Julian Todd Borden, shout out, Owen Carey, shout out. Uh, you guys are kicking major butt. And then tier three, the mentors here, we got Jarrett McAllister, one of the top three mentors in the company in the month of 
March. Had a look at that. Tony Denner, we're hearing from today. Janice Vaughn, I know her. It's her birthday Thursday, everybody. Please wish Janice a very happy birthday. <laughs> Wally Arita, Chris Bernasso, Ishmael, Eric Garcia, um, Goldstein, my bad. Eric Goldstein, I love that guy. He's leading the way. He's on the meeting right now. He's crushing deals from BNI. He got ramped up in his first year or so. Now he's just hitting on all cylinders. Um, look at that, 10 deals. I'm sure he's at 12 or 13 or 14 deals right now as of today. And JC Rangel, rounding up the top freaking 10. So you're in a treat for today hearing from Tony Denner and Michael hey, Pham. Hey, hey, real quick, can we not gloss over who was number one mentor though? What does, did that say 35 mentor deals? That's Miguel Hart. Yeah. We're going to, we're going to verify that, but shout out to him kicking major, <laughs> but California, I think he's into some lead gen magic, uh, just crushing it. So yeah, big shout out to Miguel Hart. Big time. Wow, incredible. Great job. That's nuts. He beat my record of 28. Tom, did you have a power perspective quote of the day? I do. And I will be brief since we've got a lot to cover today, but I want you all to put it in the chat. What you think the answer to this question is, do you think that people are buying solar from you based on the information that you share with them or the feelings that they have? as you are sharing that information. Which one do you think is more influential? Yep, feelings, feelings, feelings. I'm not gonna sing. Uh, Zig Ziglar, there you go, more feelings. Zig Ziglar said, uh, people don't buy for logical reasons, they buy for emotional reasons. And I want you to think about what you are bringing to your proposals whether you're meeting at somebody's kitchen table in their home or whether you're meeting remote, like on Zoom, think about what you do before you meet with them, the energy that you bring into that meeting, which is going to then influence their feelings. We've learned about Hey Hayes from Jonathan Budd at our most recent uh, event. We've learned about uh, bouncing <laughs> as Jim uh, Bunch does. Uh, but what do you do to manage the energy that you bring to that meeting what are you planning to ask them about to elicit certain types of uh, information coming out and conversation with them? And as you learn from the Jeremy Miner training, are you slowing and speeding up your rate of, of speech and in adding inflection in certain questions that you're asking? All that plays into uh, what people are feeling as you are walking them through the information, the presentation. So a lot of people, when they start in power, start in solar, are trying to get all this information that they can share, but also think about how you want to plan out an emotional arc in your appointment with a homeowner. Uh, in NorCal market development training last week, we talked a little bit about how to build pain from a PG&E bill to talk about distribution, generation, transmission, purpose, public pro, uh, programs in the, the billing breakdown. So think about how with the information that you have from the homeowner, how you can create emotion, uh, negative emotion against a utility that keeps raising their rates endlessly that they have no control over, that they're being taxed for things and supporting things that they may not even want to support as a part of that bill. So again, Zig Ziglar, people don't buy for logical reasons, they buy for emotional reasons. Think about the emotions and the emotional arc of the appointments that you are running this week. Thanks, Jonathan. It's almost like you were a pastor in a past life, Tom. I'm just saying. Uh, I'm a pastor of people with a, with a bill that they never stop paying. <laughs> Amen. Solar preacher. Power AKA convention. the solar evangelist. Always great, Tom. I feel like you spent so much time typing that out, but uh, appreciate, appreciate the wisdom. And yeah, you know, if you haven't watched Jeremy Lee Miner's training, guys, Get it in the chat, go to Power Convention and watch it. It's everything Tom said. It's worth two hours of your time. 
Power invested 30, 40 grand, getting him to two of our biggest events this year, guys. So definitely take advantage of his training. All right, moving on real quick. Power Vision is now live in a few different states, Cali, Florida, Texas. It's a work in progress. Just came out of beta. Take your university training. Go to my YouTube or Jarrett's YouTube and watch the training Jordan Shaw did last week. More training to come. I started sending my proposals yesterday. It's uh, pretty badass. So good things there. Market development meeting. If you haven't attended your local market development meeting, you should really do so. If you're in California, the NorCal meeting is today, right, Tom? Noon Pacific today. Noon Pacific, NorCal. Um, to, and then Wednesday, SoCal, 3 p.m. I'm going to have Justin Brooks on from Interconnection. He's the director and it's all about NEM crunch time. So if you want to talk NEM, go to your local market about meetings and attend all your meetings there, Texas, Florida, all the different states. Lots of gold is being shared there. Real quick, California. California can. California. There you go. Net metering 3.0. There's delays, guys. A lot of you are new to solar and you're like, 30 days is unacceptable for a permit. My goodness. And it's like, uh, that jurisdiction takes 60 days. Okay. Like we got to get a handle on our emotions. It will take four to seven months from signing to PTO period in California. That's like crushing it. Okay. Utilities are going to take two months for PTO. It is what it is. Permits are going to take two months. Like Please set expectations and your customers will appreciate it. And let's control the tickets and the emotions. Some PMs are behind two days. They have 200, 350 jobs on their pipeline. Scott, the OM interviewed 11 people yesterday. Power's getting straight to business with the five cent adder. Thankfully, could have used it sooner, but we're hiring more people. We're taking applications. Read your newsletter about this. Um, so here's a script you could share with your clients that this is the most insane time of solar history ever since ever. Um, so just be mindful of these things, you know, in all seriousness, this, this is the new reality and we have to embrace it. And there will be much more trainings on NEM 3.0 and batteries and Sonova special products coming very, very soon. So please Please be alert in the next few weeks if you're in California and attend your market meetings. Also attend Power Day, April 15th on Saturday, Super Solar Saturday across the country, guys. Attend these, build into them. If you want a leadership role, if you want to be highlighted as a testimonial, get out there, build your business with these. This is a differentiator why power is so amazing. So please get on your market calls discuss who's running these events, get part of it, take a leadership role. It's going to be epic. SolarCon power is going huge in Utah, April 20th to the 22nd. There's a coupon code, 20% uh, off, 30% off solar realtor. You can go to attendsolarcon.com. There's going to be a huge presence uh, with power and SolarCon. It's going to be great. Even the owner and CEO of Goodleap, Hayes Bernard, who's worth billions of dollars, is going to be a keynote speaker. I'm I'm impressed that they got him. It's, this is truly going to be likely the best solar industry event um, so far to date in my career. Power World, Power's uh, in-person event in San Diego, September 7th to 9th. Hotel is to be determined, but start to book your travel, book your flights on that. And lastly... Take a screenshot of this. We've got trainings every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We got lease PPA training. Um, we got enterprise training, women of power with Cynthia Isela, Marisa on here on the chat right now. Building with Bobby and so much more. Make sure to read your newsletter and getting to today's training. We have two amazing speakers for you. We're going to be talking about VSS and ODSS, Okay. And for those of you that don't know, VSS is Virtual Site Survey. It's an amazing thing that Power launched uh, barely a year ago. Insane. And it allows the homeowner or the sales rep to take a photo pack, if the home qualifies, to go internally with Power Design and get you paid M1s 
if you're selling with Good Leap or Sonova to get your M1, <laughs> get paid faster, get to design faster, have a better customer experience and get more referrals because uh, it's so important. And the fact that we're doing it, it's amazing. So we're going to hear in just a second from one of the top tier threes in Northern California on the leaderboard, who's a mentor, Tony Danner. He's going to tell us about VSS, his experience with it, why he does it and some things to look out for. And then we're going to hear from Mike Pham, uh, who is one of the top two ODSSs in the entire company. ODSS is where power has crowdsourced and revolutionized site survey. So if you can't do a VSS, there's what we call on-demand site survey. In a lot of markets, we've actually crowdsourced this, where the person goes and takes photos, sets up a ladder, and gets a little bit more into the weeds, pokes into the attic. So we're going to hear from Mike Pham, who uh, just recently sold seven deals in the last 30 days, and how he's used ODSS to supplement his income while being a dad and now making 10, 20 grand in a month. So excited to hear from him. And if you want to look into doing ODSS, like a few of you do, put into the chat if you do ODSS. I know Sean does, Mike Pham does, Tony Denner does. Um, go ahead and apply if you'd like to consider earning income doing some site surveys. And with that, I'll first introduce Tier 3 NorCal uh, leaderboard, Tony Denner, to talk about VSS. Tony, take it away, my What's friend. What's going on, JB? How you doing? I'm going to share awesome. my screen real quick and pull this up. Let's rock and roll. All right. So today I'm going to be going over um, virtual site surveys, just kind of what it is and <clears throat> how you can use it to you know, move your projects along faster. So um, looks good. All right. So how can, um, what was the site, you know, virtual site survey basically created for? It was created to reduce time from contracts to site survey completion. So, you know, it can, and not every home is, you know, perfect fit for a VSS, but in many cases, it can move your project a lot faster. Um, can also eliminate, you know, scheduling conflicts. So if you're just staying in the home and you just did that um, deal, you can just take pictures right there and, um, you know, kind of get it moving a lot faster. It will increase speed to design. So typically, you know, you'll see a design come back, you know, around seven to 10 days faster if you do your VSS and it's all approved and everything. Um, also lower cancellations, you know, you're kind of cementing yourself as the expert, kind of giving a little bit more of the white glove service there. Um, if it is approved, sometimes you will see your M1 payments, you know, hitting as fast as 72 hours after a site survey of VSS. Uh, also lowers the cost of the project. So if you ever notice, if you do an ODSS, you'll have a site survey adder and a gas mileage adder. So if you do it yourself, you won't have that. And it does increase the commissions and it also takes advantage of unique assets the competitor doesn't have. So again, just kind of showing yourself as kind of the expert and it's also scalable. So what is it? It's just a mobile, it's basically an app, the mobile app. So it's my power is the app and it allows yourself or the homeowner to collect all the information needed to basically do their own site survey, or as I said, you can do it yourself. So it can be done by either the homeowner or yourself as a seller or a mentor. Um, you know, so sometimes let's say you're doing a virtual and you have the homeowner, you, you know, maybe you can't get over there. You can always, you know, have them download the app and let them know that at the bottom, you know, if they would be willing to help you out, they can click there to do their site survey and so basically take pictures. It's not too many pictures on the VSS. It's basically like the front, back side, both sides of the home. One picture of the attic and a few pictures of the electric panel. So it doesn't take too long. And some people will do it. I've you know even given a few people like a gift card to Starbucks in Illinois that did it for me. So um, you know, it's not something every homeowner will do, but you can kind of throw it out there. And then if it's someone within an hour of you or somewhere close, you know, jam over, do your own VSS. You can also give you a chance to maybe go talk to the neighbors while you're out there. So the advantage of VSS is um, if it, you know, is approved, you usually get your M1 payment as soon as 72 hours. And the average current contract signed to site survey complete is 1.7 days. Uh, the current average from site survey completed to design complete is 4.9 days. And you get $100 for each approved VSS plus um, some mileage there. And it will decrease cancellations with faster cycle times. And it does build your credibility with customers. 
And again, you can talk to the neighbors while you're out there and possibly, you know, grab a couple more deals in the neighborhood. So how do you download the app? Uh, again, it's the My Power app. You can download it on either iTunes or Google Play. You just log in using your power credentials that you currently use. And it's going to basically have all your projects there. You would just click the project that you've entered at the bottom will say site, uh, start site survey. And you would just start it and it's, you know, it tells you what to take pictures of and even gives you a little sample picture there of exactly what you need to take a picture of. So it's pretty simple. And when you complete your site survey, what happens is the Q&A team will review it within 24 hours and they'll give you a result. And it's pass or fail. And sometimes it's, it's going to fail. OK, so it's important to know maybe what homes aren't good for VSS so you don't go out there and um, waste some time and it just fails. So there's some things that just you're going to have to get a site survey by the installer or ODSS. And I'll go over those in a second. So if it does pass, it'll be paired with the roof maintenance technology and it will basically start going into the permit phase and you'll get approval. Um, that your VSS is approved and your M1 usually gets approved shortly thereafter. And then the design team will create the engineering and send to the HJ for permitting. So that's kind of what happens after you do a VSS. These are six reasons why VSSs don't qualify. Uh, the project requires a re-roof or maybe they see something on the roof that they want to take a bet, you know, put an eye on. Um, so if you have, you know, maybe a job you're not sure on the roof, you definitely want to check the box that says request a roof inspection. You're not going to want to do a VSS on that one. If it's an MPU, um, I would suggest you have an installer or ODSS do it. If they have an existing solar system, I would also suggest you have an installer or an ODSS do it. And if they have a battery, that's another one where, you know, I suggest you don't really do a VSS on that one. And then ground mount is the other one. So you won't maybe not do a ton of ground mounts, but if you do do a ground mount, it's definitely not a good fit for a VSS. And if you have anything incomplete, um, they're going to basically reject it and require an in-person survey. So incomplete data will be any blurry photos, any photos you don't take or anything like that. And then any homes built prior to 1989, um, you're going to want to make sure for, you get, you know, attic photos, a few different pictures of the attic there. Uh, so the, it does help you become a trusted advisor as well. When you become a, you know, do your own VSS, you do become more credible, kind of shows them that you're working for them. You know, you're kind of going over and beyond what most people are going to do. And you will, you know, be seen as an expert in their eyes. Now you're, you know, you're kind of taking a little bit further steps and know, you know, you kind of know what you're doing beyond just, you know, going over a proposal with them. And it also allows you to warm down after the sale, you know, you're not just, um, you know, signing and, and leaving, it kind of lowers your cancellation rate because you're there and you're doing all the extra stuff. And now the site survey is done and they're already moving through the process. And these are things that are hard to EQ. So things that you can't really change, that's going to basically disqualify you every time. There's a ground mount, a battery storage project, a manufactured home, any Sonova projects, um, they won't qualify for VSS. And again, some of the reasons is a roof check, and if they can't see the condition of the roof, or they see anything there that makes them think it maybe needs a new roof, it's definitely going to get rejected. And here's some things you can change, though. And sometimes you get rejected because you didn't maybe take the photo. So if you miss a photo, that's something you can definitely change, poor photos. So make sure you take, you know, clear photos. And I suggest take more than one, you know, upload a few photos of each one just so it'll you know, lower your chances of it getting uh, disqualified. Uh, any missing information. So again, you just have to be complete and thorough there. And then the roof layout. So when they ask you for pictures, it's important that you get, you know, the whole house, each corner here. So this would be a perfect, you know, good picture here. This would be kind of what you want it to look like. And this would be what you don't want it to look like. So you don't want to take a picture that is excluding both corners of the home and it just has part of the home here. And the utility meter surrounding. So um, you want to get a good photo that shows the whole surrounding of the utility. The reason being is, you know, sometimes there's um, maybe, you know, a gas line or something like that. They're going to want to see that. So, and also shrubbery too. So there's any shrubbery around there, they're going to want to see that. So this would be a good picture of the immediate area surrounding the meter. And this is a good close-up meter. So when you take the close-up of the meter, you want to make sure that, you know, you can get all these numbers in here. And this is the attic. So when you do your after pictures, you want to make sure that you get, you know, you don't have to get in the attic, but you're going to have to, you know, pop your head in and get some pictures. But just so the rafters and the spacing and everything like that, make sure you have your flash on and your camera so you get a good picture like this. And this would be an insufficient photo. 
it doesn't really accurately show the size of the rafter or anything like that. So this would be a picture that would not be you know, qualified. And this is a main electric panel. So you don't have to take the cover off for a VSS. You'll just take a picture like this. So this would be a good picture of a main panel. And this would be a good picture of a main panel. This would be a good picture of the you know, label inside the main panel. And this is a good picture of your uh, main breaker here. So you want them to look like that. This would be a insufficient photo of those things. So basically it's cut off. It doesn't show all the breakers in full. So just make sure you stand back and you know get a, a picture that shows pretty much all of it. And the same thing here with the logo. So if you do a label, try to get the whole label. Don't cut it off like this, or it will also be labeled insufficient and you could get a DQ. So that's pretty much all I have for the VSS here. So I'm gonna um, stop my share here and I'm gonna hand it off and we're gonna learn about ODSS next. Nice, Tony. Clear and concise, uh, great points there. If you have any questions for Tony, type them in the chat. I think I got most of them, Tony. Someone said, are the slides available? Check knowledge base. Um, someone asked if if they wanna put notes for VSS, Tony, is that is that a thing? Like, would it be project handoff notes? Um, yeah, there's nowhere actually in the app to make notes, but you can definitely make some notes in your project handoff notes and, um, reference to your VSS. And when you guys sell a job now, um, if you go to site survey, if you plan on doing the VSS, click that button, you'll have up to three business days for you or your, uh, homeowner to complete that as well. Yeah. Make sure too, when you uh, click it, you hit save updates. Cause I've had a few, I forgot to do that. And yeah. yeah. Good call out. Good call out. Great information. Um, and Tony, just for those out there, you are a um, ODSS surveyor as well with power. Is that right? Yeah. So when the ODSS first started, I um, was one of the first ones doing it and uh, I did it for about three months and I was, you know, mentor, I just became a mentor. So I kind of phased out, but I still do my own VSS or ODSS if I need to. Cool. Should people request you in NorCal as an ODSS or? No, I'm not doing any ODSS for the company, but you can always tag me as a mentor. I'm doing there you that. go. <laughs> good, good stuff, Tony. Appreciate you. Type any questions into the chat for Tony. VSS, uh, short and sweet, very straightforward. And honestly, just, you know, big gratitude for what power has done here, guys. What other companies have such a freaking cool tool like this? So. All right, let's move on to uh, my friend of, ooh -wee, how long has it been, Mike? Um, probably 15, 18 years now, father, um, ODSS, and uh, Michael Pham crushing deals right now, soon to be mentor in the next few weeks. So Mike Pham, everybody, take it away. Hey, thanks, GB. Thanks also, Chris, for the introduction earlier. But yeah, I'm going to be here talking about the on-demand site surveying program. A uh, little bit about my journey, um, how to actually get started in the on-demand site survey, and also uh, establishing like a great customer experience when I do these uh, site surveying. Um, just a little bit about myself. Again, my name is Mike Pham. I'm an on-demand site surveyor. I'm just like Tony, got into the program right when it began. I believe it was February or March of last year, and uh, still continue to do this. Um, I've now surveyed over 250 homes. I'm over in Southern California area. Uh, my main area is uh, East Los Angeles, Inland Empire, and North Orange County. Um, I, like Chris said earlier, I've been with Power for about two years. I kind of had a hard time finding my footing uh, into getting solar kind of started, getting the sales going. So it took me a little while because I had other businesses going. But when I found the opportunity that I can actually become an on-demand site surveyor program, I just saw the huge leverage. I can actually let everyone know in my network when I start posting on social media, because I'm already posting already about my family and friends and stuff that I'm doing, that this was a great opportunity to kind of leverage that and let everyone know. It's like, hey, Mike's here doing solar. Come and find out how I can help you guys out. So it's been a really great leverage. Boom. So here, uh, one of my favorite quotes here from Gary V or Gary Vaynerchuk, if you guys don't know yet, is he always says, document everything about your journey. And so I took that to heart. When I became a site surveyor, I just documented everything from beginning to end and it still continue to do so. I document probably at least, I mean, every week, I have not missed yet. So it's been great. 
kind of sharing and I've utilized the Instagram stories, Facebook stories, uh, Instagram reels, really just kind of saying, you know, just a couple tidbits I do catch at the homes, kind of really kind of talk about, make it really fun. You know, over here, client going solar won't hesitate to blast her huge AC in here, um, making it fun, <laughs> you know, talking about the pets, you know, house I'm putting solar on over here in the middle here talking about I met a business owner over in uh, Whittier, the owner of Tacos y Que, if you guys are familiar with the area. So really cool. I really just chop it up and just make it a really cool experience uh, for the clients when I am there. And really kind of documenting either my daily journey or my weekly journey, kind of letting everyone know that, hey, these are the cities I'm going to be in this week, uh, consultations I'm doing, solar designs that I'm actually personally doing, kind of letting everyone know, hopefully, you know, finding a ping like, hey, you know what? My family is actually over in Arcadia. Can you guys help me out? And I'll get those tags and messages along the way. And really kind of documenting uh, when I do my side surveys of what I'm actually doing. What am I doing inside the attic? What am I doing? Checking out the electrical panel, the roofs when I'm walking around the house. So it's been a real cool lever to market myself out and let everyone know I am doing solar. And actually, so how do you get started on becoming an on-demand site server program? So go to your power university for a lot of new people that want to get started in this. Go to the certification for ODSS certification. It really kind of trains you to kind of go through the safety procedures of how to conduct yourself. Being safe a lot around the electrical panel because unlike the uh, VSS where you don't take the electrical panel off, you will actually be pulling that off, taking pictures, uh, how to be safe around that type of surroundings. Uh, being inside and needing the attic space, we will get the ladder here. So I have an 18 foot uh, multi position ladder that we will need to take inside the house, how to make sure that we're safely going in and out of the attic and also really kind of how to document the whole property and be safe around the property. When we get those pictures, all that information report over to the design team. Um, along inside the certification, uh, there is the new roof tile assessment. So we do prop the ladder up onto the side of the house to actually get a better angle and picture and integrity quality of the actual roof tiles, if it's concrete roof tiles or maybe clay roof tiles, or even really get a better look at the uh, shingles there too. And then the also added is the battery site surveying, you know, NEM 3.0 with all the batteries gonna be required. Uh, so now we wanna make sure we have enough space for all the new equipment that's gonna be going in. So real easy certification to go through, just go through the training. Um, and it's really basic to get the quiz and test it out and get you going there. So also there are tools required uh, that you will be investing in for your site surveying. Uh, one of the main tools is actually getting a GoPro or just a small video camera. Um, you can actually use a drone if you are a, I believe it's a part 107 certified to actually use a drone for commercial use just as for this position here. You can actually do drone flying to get those roof shots. Um, I've been using a GoPro you kind of see a picture here I have mounted on a, an extension pole. This is about six foot short and I extend all the way up to 24 feet high. So it allows me to get all corners of the roof plans of around the house. Uh, make sure also because there is a ladder required to go inside the attic and also prop up against the roof that you have a vehicle that you can actually put the ladder in. Um, this extends up to about 18 feet high there too. And there's also going to be a number of measuring tools to also get to prepare yourself a uh, digital uh, pitch measuring tool here in this orange screen, uh, orange square, and also the digital laser measure here for measuring inside the room and also uh, the attic space there too. Uh, moving on, there are two important things uh, to download when you are a site surveyor to actually download the team up counter and also the power site application here. The team up counter, this is very important because we do have a team of schedulers that will be uh, coordinating with the appointments and seeing how and where that appointment can actually be set up for you. So you kind of let the team know, it's like, hey, you know what, today I'm available from, you know, nine to three, and then tomorrow I'm available from, you know, nine to seven, or however you want to do, customize it the way that you want it. I like to work Monday through Fridays is my main time that I keep my weekends off. So however you want to do it, I used to do the weekends. I just keep it during the week now too. Power site app uh, is very important. This is where you're going to be taking pictures for the team of the uh, lead here and be uploading that information up to the design team. I'll kind of show you that on the next slide. And really, you know, being a site surveyor, it's a lot of teamwork, scheduling with the schedulers, 
Um, if there's any issues out there on the field, uh, Julian Jackson, the main field manager, he's very easy to get a hold of. If you have any troubles, what's going on in the field, and um, it's been really great. It makes the process very easy knowing that he's there. And he also conducts. Uh, we conduct like a monthly meeting, so kind of getting the feedback off from the field, what's working, what's not working, you know, what's coming up, what's changing. Uh, one amazing thing that has been happening lately is that we are getting the new on-demand express scheduling. So instead of the schedulers giving us uh, certain appointments, now we can actually, they'll let us know when appointments are available within our area. Now we can actually pick and choose on a first come first serve basis and get those uh, leads uh, we do get paid $100 uh, per on-demand site surveying, and we also get paid mileage uh, from home to there and also back there too. So real great compensation on that. Uh, here's a screenshot of the Power Site app. This is very important. This will kind of give us a heads up, uh, you know, what today's appointments are. It will kind of let us know what leads are already appointed to us. Um, today, unfortunately, I got double booked. So I had to tell the teams like, hey, man, I got double booked today. We need to just reschedule this. And the team was immediately on that and we got that rescheduled. So it does happen. Once you do choose the uh, lead, it'll show up with their address, their phone number, uh, their email address. We do get access to the proposal. That way we can actually see where the solar array is going to be and what roof plan we need to pay extra attention to. And then once you do click the uh, survey, there are four tab category areas that you'll be filling out. Homeowners information, the exterior, the roof, and also the structural. Homeowners information is kind of basic stuff. How old is the roof? Is there any ongoing leaks? Are there any unpermitted structures that the team needs to be aware of? Uh, the exterior will be like a complete 360 picture of the home exterior. Also, this will be a detailed uh, look at the, also the electrical panel and also inside the electrical panel when we do take that off. Uh, the roof, uh, once I get my GoPro video shots done, I actually take snippets of that, of certain roof planes and load that up. Uh, they also want to know if there's any shading issues at all there too. And then when it comes down to the structural, this will be more of the attic area measurements inside the pitch measurements um if there's any broken uh, studs there is there any old wood shakes or water damage the team's really looking out for that there too and lastly giving out that customer experience setting the right expectations uh when we do get the appointments we do notify and let the customer know that we are heading over there uh, they want us to let the customer know probably about like 30 minutes before i like to do it a couple hours ahead of time uh, that could either be on a call or just a nice little text message like, hey just want to confirm our appointment today i will be arriving within this time when we do get those appointment leads it's about a two to three hour window so i like to give them like a 30 minute window it's like hey am i going to come more at the beginning of the appointment set or more at the later time set kind of let them know that uh, i am arriving and then um when i do arrive you know i congratulate them about the going solar and I really kind of let them know what I'm doing here today. I'll be serving the property on really just taking pictures and taking measurements to gather this report. And so I can actually send it to the design team. And hopefully that can actually deter like the next question is I always used to get this a lot. It's like, hey, you know, how's my attic look, you know, or how's my roof look or how's my electrical panel look? You know, so unfortunately, I can't answer those questions. But as soon as the design team actually looks at the report, they can actually help you out. Nice. And also, um, if I do get asked any type of recommendations or opinions about, you know, panel placements or what their loan is, or it was like, hey, what do you think about this? It's like I really kind of defer that back to the consultant uh, to proceed with any additional advice there too. And then when I do wrap it up, I let them know everything's done. Make sure the home is still clean as I was when I arrived, and um, that's about it there. Awesome. Thank you, Mike. I mean, I hope you're training every freaking ODSS in the company, bro, because your expertise, your professionalism, your first touch of the homeowner's experience with power on our behalf. I mean, seriously, uh, give a shout out to Mike guys in the chat because, um, yeah, this is all a testament of what you do, Mike, why you're, you're such a badass. And I'm sure you're going to get recommended a lot 
in uh, in ODSS and look for him soon in the coming weeks as a tier three mentor as well. Yeah, it's definitely uh, helped me scale my sales. You know what Chris mentioned, like I'm having the best month. You know, I've been doing this consistently for a year posting and everyone's finally coming back, you know, especially with NEM 2.0 uh, deadline. It's really helped. I got like seven, if not eight sales going on right now, five personal sales. So that's a personal best for me. So it's been really great to really kind of market myself out there and I love not, it. not be that ninja. Yeah, One Mike, thing. if I could just reiterate what Bernasso was saying, man, um, you are like a true, like shining example of how we all want someone to show up to our jobs. The first person they see, the way you interact with the customers, the way you defer it back to the sales rep, don't get too involved, but make us look good. Your professionalism um, is truly appreciated. And if you guys didn't catch, I mean, I hope you're hearing what he's saying. ODSS, not only are you getting out there into the field, you're learning about solar, but he's posting it to social, posting his journey. And he's generating leads from this because people see that he's involved in solar and not just another solar bro selling solar. He actually knows what he's doing. He's showing up to clients' houses. He's becoming the expert in the field. Um, that is a, a great way to generate leads. So yeah, Mike, shout out to you. And I hope that like Cynthia said in the chat that you are teaching all the other people who are coming on board to be the, uh, the example of how to do this right. Senior ODSS. Promotion, promotion. Yeah, yeah. Um, I appreciate right it. I appreciate it all, team. Hey, Mike, uh, one or two quick questions. If you have questions for Mike, please type them into the chat. I know I type one or two here. Do you guys weigh tiles now? Do you have to have a device to, to weigh a tile? Yeah, we do. It gets a little tricky because I kind of stand on the ladder, kind of holding the digital weight. Is I use a um, the luggage digital weight. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I attached that at the end and, you know, it gets a little tricky sometimes, but sure. yeah, we do have to weigh out the tile and it makes a big difference uh, when it gets down to the project and hey, I got a stuck project before, but getting the weight helped me uh, not do any adders, you could say. Right. Okay. And, and just to tell everyone, if you have issues with a site surveyor that's not like Mike or causing some concerns, please email julian.jackson at power.com and we will nip those in the butt ASAP. All right. And then I had a, one more question here. How would you say, like how much time on average, Mike, for you and SoCal per job, like with some travel, would you say, is it two hours, two and a half hours? And then how much do you make? 150 bucks with, all in all with gas as well? Or what does that look like? Yeah, about like 130-ish, 140. Uh, you can actually set like a, your own radius of how far you want to travel. I set mine out to 50 miles, but I know it's probably around like 30, 35, depending on like traffic and stuff like that. Um, it. but yeah, it's 100 bucks for the job, 45 cents for the mileage from your home and back for each job. You know, last summer, I think I did like, 40 jobs kind of to get you know it gets pretty crazy sometimes you, yeah you did a lot you were like number one number two in the company uh lily asked a good question she says when you do check the paper underlayment are you checking it like on the first story where you can check it versus the second story like are you checking it where the solar might go and i just want to call out to lily that even when our installers get on the roof to check the paper, they even can't check every single area. So it will happen no matter what company you're at or what process, but anything to speak to that, Mike, because that is uh, troublesome. And if, if we need a roof check, you can check the box, leave it in handoff notes, Lily, and make sure that we get in someone up on the roof. But any thoughts on when you check the paper, Mike, or you just go into the closest spot and check in the paper i personally like to try to find the spot where the solar panels are physically going to be at but if it is on a second story just for liability reasons i don't get that high my ladder only goes up to 18 feet that right. was required so i will find the next closest uh first floor uh underlayment and then i will let the team know it's like hey you know what i took this off the first floor this is where i'm at this is where the solar panels are at you know based on the environments and conditions, like I think it's going to be a good condition, you know, right. alignment to go with. And if not, make the proper note. And of course, if the team figures like, oh, it's a little, you know, maybe we need someone else out to get to the second story, then you can make that happen. 
Yeah, if you know the paper's older than 20, 30 years, Lily, or it's a second story home, go ahead and put in project handoff notes. I would prefer if the installer gets on the roof and does the survey and checks the second story paper. So that's up to uh, us sales professionals to, to really fine tune those asks and those notes. Carl, let's go to you, sir. Go ahead and unmute. Hello, thank you, Chris. Great, I, I just, I'm just finishing my ODSS. I'm only with power a couple months. It's slow getting started, my, not to be too verbose, but my problem is the computer end of it. But I did sell solar before this and I know it's easy to do, but with the ODSS program, I'll also be out there. I can knock on doors and do canvassing afterwards. But uh, as far as the tools, I could get everything and I could get the GoPro. Can I use my phone as the, the GoPro video or do I have to buy a video camera? And there's a lot of times in older houses where you just cannot, there's no way to get at, to see the rafters and measure them inside of the houses. What do I do then? Yeah, so concerning the GoPro, I, as a backup, I actually have a phone attachment. So you can actually do a phone attachment onto the extended pole. So I do that too. But if you're comfortable extending your phone, you know, 20, 30 feet in the air, by all means, you know, but yeah, you can make that happen. I've done that before. Uh, when my GoPro like battery just went dead, I didn't have a backup battery. So I had to use a phone attachment. Like I can make it happen on that. And then concerning the attic, sometimes the homes don't have an attic or maybe they have an attic access from like the second story roof, you know, we don't go on the roof at all. We don't set foot on the roof. That's like a big no, no, like we'll get camp pretty much. I've seen that in the training. Yeah. So, and then, um, but yeah, I mean, um, I lost track of my mind. What was that question? <laughs> what, what, when you, when there's no way to get like my house in was built in 18, oh, yeah, yeah. there is no way to get access to the roof rafters. You yeah, can't see. Yeah, so you can actually do the measurement from the outside of the eave. Okay, um, the good. Are coming through, you still take the stud measurements, you know, two by four, two by six, and the 24, 16 inch spacing. And then you can still use the digital uh, pitch measure from the outside. Yeah. Just let the team know that's what you did. But as, as far as the drone, do I need that to get started? Not at all. I, I don't have a drone. I don't have a license unless you want to go down that path. I get a yeah. license, part 107 license. You do that. Yeah. In yeah. And, and the tools that said I need it one, I'm like, oh my God, now yeah. I have to get a drone. Awesome. But, but I could see how that would be beneficial in the future. I, I can see it where it kind of speeds up the process, but I've been so handy with my extension pole and my GoPro. Like I could whip through really quick. You know, I take about like 30, 40 minutes on average to something really basic. And then right. when I get into like the roof, it probably takes about 40 to 60 minutes for my visits. Well, and, and I'm not concerned with the time because I'll be out there. I, afterwards, I could canvas the area. I could say, blah, 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 this. There you go. Is it okay to say I'm, we're doing a solar project? Oh, I've done that. that. I'll go up to partners, I'll go up to everyone outside that's like looking at, hey, what are you doing? You know, people walking by with their dogs. I, I have a flyer and business card handy. Like, I'll show okay. them. So that's not like stepping on the toes of the person who's the seller. Not at all. Okay. Better, I'm sure there is a fine line to that because like if the homeowner talks to them and says, Hey, I have a, I have a lead or something like that. I would imagine at that point, Mike, you would notify the seller saying, Hey, your homeowner, uh, their neighbor said they were interested or, you know, you would try to get it back to the seller. Correct. Oh, totally. 50, 50. For sure. All right, let's sure. do a, one more question, then I'm going to end the recording for those that have to hop off, and we'll do a little bit of office hours Q&A here in a second. So, Owen, go for it, my friend. Hey, what's going on? Thanks for all the hard work you're doing. Um, this is more in relation to California with our stupid uh, gas meter rules. Um, are you taking like a, a photo of a measuring tape from the main service to the gas meter if I, if I did a virtual site survey? Um and then also, uh, when you take the deadbolts off on that main and you take a photo, can you tell what the bus bar rating is or are you just kind of screwed without the placard? Uh, the bus bar, hopefully it has a label where it actually says it. I'm yeah. not too familiar with the bus bar like technicalities. Yeah. So 
if it doesn't have a label, I'll take a bunch of extra shots of the bus bar itself. So okay. kind of let the design team uh, figure that out. And then concerning the gas meter placement to the main panel, uh, we are required to take a vertical and a horizontal measurement to let the team know how much spacing is off the panel. All right, thanks. Yeah. I think it's three feet every direction, including even outward. So brushes, HVAC, gas, anything at all. Um, could cause an obstruction or even when an electric panel is under a awning or patio now, um, that's not even to code as well. So I guess on that note too, then, so if you're doing a site survey for batteries, is there kind of, are we doing on-demand site surveys for batteries as well? And if so, uh, not at this time. Oh, we're not. Okay. We might be soon and power will be designing them soon, but not at this time. Um, hopefully soon because California's going to be selling batteries in about a week or so nonstop like crazy. So, all right, cool. Well, I'm going to stop this recording now. Huge shout out again to Michael Pham in Southern California, the best ODSS crushing the game soon to be tier three. And as well, um, Tony Denner, my NorCal man up in Brentwood, Northern California on the leaderboard. Uh, Crush and Tier 3, both of them sharing their knowledge, professionalism, and showing us the tools that are setting power apart, making us so damn awesome. In under like a year, this was just launched like a year ago, and in-house designs was a year ago. So uh, be patient as power is learning and getting better every single month. Um, but big thank you to these gentlemen. Reach out to them if you have more questions.